Hi guys, good afternoon, welcome to the session. So my name is Primus Veku and uh, here is Primus uh, learning again. Uh, this video today will be about uh, AWS Control Tower. So we'll look at the AWS Control Tower. We'll also look at what AWS organizations are, what landing zones are, and uh, what AWS Identity Center is. Um, you must have been hearing of SSO or single sign-on. Uh, these are two new. These are new. Uh, this is a new service that represents, or that um, maybe AWS renamed SSO and just um, made a new, new, you know, a new dashboard for it and named it AWS Identity Center. So let's talk about AWS Control Tower, which is able to create, um, you know, all of these things that I just mentioned. So you'll see how to do that and know that you use AWS Control Tower to create AWS accounts or to create, uh, you can use AWS Control Tower to create and control multiple AWS accounts. Sometimes when you go to an organization, you see that the organization manages about a hundred AWS accounts. And you know, you see those accounts displayed in one interface and you click on one and log into them. We'll walk through the process of, of creating that and landing zones and, and how uh, that is done through AWS Control Tower. So welcome to Primus Learning. My name is Primus Veku. Uh, this would be a demo. So this video will walk you through step-by-step step all the all through the process. It will take long. So I'll pause it at one point to get the Control Tower to complete creation um, before uh, we come back and continue. So I will just pause and then restart when uh, that process is done because it will take like 60 minutes. Um, prerequisite, you need to have two or three emails. Um, if you already have an AWS account, that is your root account or your, your you know, your base account, we'll call it in Control Tower, the base account. So if you have your base account, uh, you need to have like two email addresses that you would use in the process. So that's a prerequisite you need to have. You can create email email accounts with Gmail, right? So you can just, it's free. You can create two Gmail accounts to use for this process. So I have these two accounts that are created. Uh, they are Yahoo accounts that I created. I have a Gmail that is already um um, I have an AWS account that is created with Gmail. So that Gmail that I just showed you, this is the AWS account. Nothing has been created in here. Um, it's a brand new account. I've not done any work inside. All right. So let's talk about Control Tower. What is AWS Control Tower? So this is an AWS service that simplifies the process of setting up and governing a secure multiple AWS accounts, right? Or AWS environment. And this is based on, on practices that AWS has put forth as best practices. So the, the AWS Control Tower helps to establish a landing zone, what we call a landing zone. So those base accounts, which is a well-architected, secure baseline environment, which follows best practices that AWS has put forth. So landing zones would include a set of AWS accounts. So you can you can decide to create as many as 100 AWS accounts using this control tower. Uh, those accounts are created in what is called landing zones, right? So a base, there's a base uh, uh, infrastructure in place, including a network architecture, including security and com uh, compliance controls. So those are some of the things that a base account would have. And now there are some key features and components of, of control tower, as you'd see here, account vending. So it controls all, it automatically uh, creating many accounts um, and applying predefined uh, policies, as we just uh, mentioned above. And it helps to keep your environment consistent across the different accounts, right? It gives you that multi-account structure. So you, you're able to structure your account, the, non, the many accounts that you have according to AWS organizational units or organization units as you, you see here. So, uh, you know, uh, Control Tower establishes a multi-account environment based on AWS best practices, including um, the, aid, the use of AWS organizations to create and manage accounts and all AWS organizations, or organization units, uh, as you see here, organizational units. What are some of the guardrails, right? So when you're creating, using Control Tower, it helps you get um, 
guardrails that can um, you know help your account. So what are guardrails? Guardrails are control tower uh, uh, pre-configured policies that are used to enforce compliance, compliance with, with different things, right? You Compliance here could mean, hey, no S3 bucket should be created public. No AWS, no, no, no developer, for instance, should be able to create any instance that is above a T2 micro or no, this, 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 that's com you complain, you, you're compliant with certain rules, right? Certain things that you've defined in your AWS account or or your account should be this this and that so those those are guardrails that help enforce compliance security compliance operational best practices and different things that you have right so there are different types of of guardrails there's the detective guardrails and and these are guardrails that help you detect what's happening in your environment it uses some tools like cloud trail and, and aws config cloud trail you know what cloud trail is it gets you logs of, of of things that are running aws config catches some of those compliance issues and you can see whether things are compliant with what you've put in place Preventive guardrails are those guardrails that help you uh, prevent people uh, users or, or from doing certain things, right? So you can't create a, a, a an AWS account or an S3 bucket, for instance, if you decide to put it into place. You can't create an AWS S3 bucket that is public. You can't create an EC2 instance that is this. If you are this type of user, you can't do this, 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 and this. So they prevent you from doing certain things, right? You have other guardrails like data, then um, residence, residency, um, operational guardrails, you know, those that you set up and all that. And you have what is called service control policies. Those are the policies that I was mentioning um, that allows you to, to, to get pre-configured uh, uh, pre permissions and restrictions on your account, and you can set them up. And then you have the audit. Audit control tower provides visibility into the compliance of your AWS environment through the use of AWS config. Remember I mentioned AWS config above? So, so this this config tool helps you monitor um, changes in your account. You can track compliance. You can actually use it to investigate issues that are happening. For instance, there's a, an attack in your AWS account. You would use config to see uh, where the attack is coming from, where it is going to, uh, the IP address from where it's coming, and all of those 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 things. Right? You use AWS config to do that, and you can even actually query AWS config. There's a there's a, a query environment for AWS config. Yeah, and identity center, as I was saying, it's it's also formally called SSO, single sign-on, and it is an IAM service that is um, that makes it easy to centrally manage access to multiple AWS uh, accounts, right? So I mentioned that you could see all your AWS accounts and click directly from there to, to access your AWS account. So I'll show you, show you what that, is all about in a moment. So let's head right into our AWS um, console and uh, search for the service. So let's search for the service control tower. I want you to go to the service called control tower. That's where we'll create a control tower environment and uh, begin to make it work, right? So you see, when you go to control tower, it would ask you to set up your well-architected automated landing zone. So this is a service that you can use to create your landing zone. And your landing zone, you hear in organizations, they are talking about landing zones. So a landing zone would contain a number of AWS accounts. And you can always create your AWS accounts using this landing zone. So let's click on, on that setting there. And you see it provides you different configurations here. So it asks you to review the pricing. Uh, normally, uh, this is this is pricing about AWS Control Tower. Um, while some AWS services come at no additional charge, you will pay for services such as AWS Service Catalog, CloudTrail. So all the services that Control Tower per se is really not not charged; it's free. But the services underlying it. So for instance, if if your Control Tower creates AWS accounts with CloudTrail, with um, with AWS Config, with CloudWatch, with notifications from SNS, with S3 buckets, of course you have to pay for those other services. Yeah, that's that's what uh, the pricing there will be telling you. And you want to be in one region, so. You'd have to choose a home region for your AWS control tower. And, and this is where you select the home region, right? Um, you can select that home region. 
and also add other regions where you want control tower to have control over right so these ones will be active by default but if you are in europe in this place you will have to select it um, and select any other ones uh, that you want aws control tower to create accounts in or to create stuff inside so here it's asking you whether to deny um, region settings for something nope i don't want to enable that i just want it to be the way it is and i'll just hit next all right now AWS Control Tower, right, would, would first of all create some um, OUs, organizational units um, for you. So you could have security organizational unit. So security is the default organizational unit name for your shared accounts. OU names must be unique and can be edited after you set up your landing zone. So you can name them the way you want, but I will leave them as this. There is, these are the default. The defaults include the security OU and the sandbox OU. So you could change these according to your organization naming standards, right? But I want to leave these as they are. So this one is a sandbox and it's by default and it is used also, uh, you know, for you. These are the initial organizational units that would come with your account. It's organizational units are not accounts themselves, but it's just a way to structure your accounts. So you can have accounts on that security. So you have your security accounts and you have your sandbox accounts or your test accounts and so on and so forth. Under, under the, the organizational units. So you see it automatically picks up your default or your base AWS account because you need to be able to create the others from an already existing AWS account. So we are creating this one from the Primus Learning Test 1 Gmail account, which is the account that I created here. And so you need two more email addresses, as I mentioned earlier, to create your other accounts. So create account. So once you need two more emails. So I'll use this email here to go ahead and put here. So this will create an account and the account email will be Primus Learning Test 2 at yahoo.com. And the landing zone, let's see, change account name. Keep your log archive account name unique from your other account name. So this, 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 you can give any name here, right? So I'll just leave this. You cannot edit the name after setting up your account. So this account will be called log archive account. You can name it as you want. So leave the log archive because this is just a demo. And uh, we can create another account here. We call called audit account. Remember, you're creating them under those um under those organizational units that we defined earlier. So you can call this one audit because it's probably under your your security account. So create. We we'll use the other email address. So this account, this organizational unit will come with two extra accounts. So there will be three accounts that are all chained together and controlled by our AWS control tower. All right, so I've given this email. This one will be called log archive. This other one will be called audit. You can name it the way you want, but let's leave this as this and go to next. So we've gone to next and it's giving you a kind of additional configurations that you could do. Uh, so it's asking you if you can enable CloudTrail. If you want CloudTrail to be enabled, yes, you can enable it. And log configuration for Amazon S3 before the trails uh, can, you know, you read more information about this before they can, can um, you know, go to different, different retention. So these are retention policies for this logging. So you see here uh, in these two fields, Enter numbers that represent lifecycle retention times for the Amazon S3 logging bucket and access logging bucket. So this, this will give you buckets for the number of years. You can decide to say days. You should delete this thing in days. So it will retain, it will retain the data for the particular days. So the default is 365 days. You could just say, hey, clean this thing after seven days or clean this thing after seven days. And it will go ahead and clean it after those number of days. 
And the encryption, if you want to enable encryption, you can go ahead and enable encryption for your control tower environment. So let's see, we can leave this as optional for now and continue. And it will just review and ask you, hey, do you want to go ahead and create your control tower environment? And I'll say, yes, please go ahead and set up my control tower environment. All right, so let's go ahead and set up our landing zone. So we've clicked on it and it's loading. It will tell us the amount of time it will take to create the whole of this landing zone. All right, so you see, it says the estimated time is around 60 minutes. It will not take up to 60, I think about 40 because the number of accounts it's creating will be, um, it, there are just two, right? So um, that's, that's the time it's estimating to create. And these are the things it will set up, right? This control tower environment will set up two organizational units, which are the ones that I mentioned, security and sandbox. One for your shared accounts and one for accounts that will be provisioned by your users. Three shared accounts, which are the management account. So there will be three shared accounts, the main account, which is this one, and then the other two AWS accounts, which we just mentioned. Your selected identity and access management configuration. So it will create an access management environment and there will be 20 preventive controls to enforce policies and three detective controls to detect configuration violations. So if you go to config after creating this environment, you should be able to see some, some, some things that are, uh, or, uh, you know, showing whether you are in, con you, you know, you are, you're in compliance or not. And there, there are other 20 preventive controls that are set up initially with this. You can always modify those. So this will take some time to create. Uh, it's currently at 3%. I'll just pause this video and we'll get back here after uh, this account has completed creating. So I'll just pause and we'll come back um, as soon as it uh, creates. So I'll pause, go ahead and pause. See you in a bit. Hi guys, so the setup is complete here and we are ready to roll. So our AWS control tower environment has been set up. And as we mentioned earlier, these are the things that have been created. You can see we have two organizational units created, three shared accounts are in control by control tower, 20 preventive guardrails, and of course, um, three detective policies uh, have been enabled. All right. So let's go through each of these things and explain what they do. You can see some of the details down here. You can see that registered under organizational units, we have uh, three organizational units. We have the root account, which is the main account. We have the sandbox organizational unit, which is the one we created. And we also have the security uh, um, uh, organizational units. And enrolled accounts include the two accounts, the log archive account and the audit account. And of course, the, the main account, which is this one. So there are three. And you see that they are all under these organizational units. We have an, a root organizational unit, which uh, the main account is under. We have the security organizational unit, which we created. And we also have um, this one, which is the the security organizational unit. So these two accounts are under the security organizational unit. The sandbox, um, the, the sandbox uh, organizational unit is what we would use in creating uh, uh, other accounts. If you want to add accounts afterwards, you can do a, go ahead and do that right away. So uh, give me a moment, let me see. All right, so um, let's go ahead. So we have these all configured or set up. It took about 30 minutes to get this account set up. So sorry um, if anything, uh, let's see. All right, let's go ahead please. So you have the get started page. It's just like, you know, the page you can go to to see more details. And then you have the organization uh, page. So on this, page, you can see um, the structure of the whole setup, right? So this is the structure. You have the root account, the root organizational unit. The root organizational unit is the one that is created by default for the permanent account. So permanent account is subscribed under here. You have the ID, the resource, um, the resource ID here, or the 
the root account ID, that's it. And you have the sandbox. Remember the sandbox is where this is the organization that you need, you can use to create different AWS accounts under for use. Let's say you have a dev account you want to create, you have a staging account you want to create, you have a, and so on and so forth. And under this, other one. So this is the security organizational unit. You have the two accounts that we created, the lock archive account and the audit accounts. These accounts exist under the security organizational unit. And this account is the main account. It is enrolled under this, um, uh, you know, it is enrolled under this control tower environment. Account factory is where you actually create uh, AWS accounts. So if you want to add an AWS account, right? under the control of control tower. This is where you go and add that account. You just come in, create, uh, click on create. Uh, so it's an unknown error here. Click on create and you see you can add accounts, email ID, da, 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 and go ahead and create everything with all this configuration and you see you can add it only under the sandbox organizational unit because it is not the management organization uh, um, stuff like the security and log audit ones this one is on the sandbox or uh, and so you can you can create many other accounts under this and you have the ability to add users so you see you can add an im user and so on and so forth through here so let's go ahead and move out of here and go to the next thing so we have other things here right so you have what is called the categories and categories are groups of aws managed controls that help you achieve compliance so these are the categories of compliance um, controls that you can have so you see you can establish logging and monitoring you can encrypt data at rest you can do so many other things right so you can see the details about these when you click on each other so you, when you click on this you see address or controls that control different things right uh, you can see the details here and these are all the controls um, on this page so you can see all the controls that you have in your control tower environment according to services so you have different um, controls you control different services and you can use each to control all the other services users and access management so users and access here is all about the users that you currently have in your organization or in your control tower environment and so you see we have one user that has been creating which is the default user and this user we can use it um, it's it's the root user call it that um, is currently um, configured and it's configured with SSO, which means you can use this portal. This link has been sent to my um, to my email address, so to the main email address, which is this one uh, that I used to create the main account. So details about it have been sent there. So if I go to that account, let me just log into Gmail and go to that account. This is the account here. I think this uh, no, it's not this account. It is this account. So let let's see let's verify so we should have an email that is sent by aws to here you see there are a couple of email addresses that have been sent so you will see that some aws accounts have been created so you can confirm this you see so greetings from aws thank you for signing up for aws basic stuff mm, if you interact with this so this is not the one i want Let's go back, I think, this one. So it signs you up to an AWS account and tells you that, and then let's check this one. So it's asking you to accept an invitation to an identity center. So remember I said the root user has access as an IM user, right? So you need to accept this invitation to be able to set up your credentials as that root user. And now let's set up the credentials. We'll just use this email. Uh, so no, so, sorry, I'll just, the email is already indicating. So you see it's the root account email. I'll just set up a password that I can remember and let's confirm that password.
So I can remember this password. I'll just set it up. So for instance, when, when you go into an organization and they want to grant you access to control tower, they can do it this way, right? They will go on control tower or, or on the single sign-on environment and, and add you. So the user here is that email address. So the user here is this email address, right? This is the email address. For you to log in so you're logging in you could also log i'll show you another way that you could also log into this account and then the password is this password i think it picks it up and voila it's asking you since it's the root account it will ask you to set up authentication with your authentication app what i would do here is i will use my authentication app and set it up with um you know, I'll scan the the uh, the QR code here. I'll scan it to get my authentication set up. I'll use Google Authenticator to do that. So you go to your Google Authenticator. If you are an AWS person, you should know how to set this up already and scan that QR code. So you pick up this new um, authentication for you. And it says here, AWS SSO Primus Learning Test 1. Now I've done that, I need to put the authenticator code here. So I'll put the code that I just got here, right here and assign MFA and done. It has assigned MFA and it will take me now to my AWS, uh, to, to the environment where you can see, you can log in, right? You've signed in as through single sign-on, through the identity center. And now you see, I have three AWS accounts. Most of you have gone to work for an organization and you've seen accounts displayed this way. This is how you set it up. So you see the audit account, you see the log archive account, and you see the Primus Learning Test account. This is the root account. This is the second account we created that was called Log Archive. And this is the third one. Now you see where there is Sandbox OU. Under that Sandbox OU, you can add more accounts and the accounts will appear here because they are managed by Control Tower. I told you earlier that I will show you how you could go to that account again from here. So you can go to that page, to this page, right from here. So if you just click on this link, it will take you to that page most of you must have seen this in your organization they will give you um you know an invitation will be sent to you you accept create an uh, an uh, you know a password for yourself and all that and you'll be given just a link like this one to use and access your aws environment and you will see like maybe if your organization has 100 aws accounts you see all those aws accounts appear here just as these ones why because they have gone under their sandbox and they have added more accounts so if we go back here and go to uh, account factory this is where they will add more account and you remember i said you can add more accounts only through under sandbox because those are the accounts um that's that's where you you can add the rest are just management account control uh, audit account and log archive account so guys i think this is very helpful for most of you who go and work in bigger organizations or in generally in in organizations out there this is how organizations you log into your aws account so if i have to log into this account what do i do i simply uh, click there and log i can log in in different ways i can log in through the command line so you see this is how you set up your command line uh, so for instance you want to uh, log in through your your cli you can use this or you want to sso into the account which means you want to be able to choose the account from your your terminal right so if i want to choose this account from my terminal what i would do is i will copy this link here and come in here and say Let's say I want to log into my AWS environment to one of those accounts. I'll come in here and say AWS SSO configure. Oh, sorry, AWS configure SSO. That's the command. Then it will ask you for that URL, and I'll paste this URL. This is the URL. And then it will ask you the region, you provide the region, so US, East, 
one, right? You see the US East one. I will it will send you a link to confirm. It will send you a link. You confirm the link. Once you confirm, it will ask you to allow. So it brings something else to ask you to allow or put your username and password. If you were already on in a browser that has you locked in, you will not need to do this. But in this case, I'll just do I'll just put put this email. So you put your email that you used earlier. So I'll put this email for the root account and then your password. The pa remember the password we set up uh, when we got that invitation. So I'll just pass that password here and log in and it will allow me to use my MFA and pass the code that is in my MFA. Remember we just set up a MFA, right? So I'll pass that and sign in. All right, so it will provide me an allow thing for me to allow that account to have access. So I've allowed to have access temporarily, temporarily through my CLI. And now I want to choose the account I want to go into. So you, so you just go up and down your keys here. So I'm just going to go into this account. And what type of access do I have? I have two types of default access that is set up. There is the AWS administrator access and there's the AWS service catalog end user access. I want to go with the admin privileges. So I'll just enter this AWS administrator access here. And voila, I have access to my AWS account. I can set up everything here. And this is the profile that I would use. So I can begin running, uh, you know, I can begin running uh, AWS commands, CLI commands here. So for instance, I can run AWS S3 LS. That, so you have to pass the profile here because you selected amongst three, three accounts. So the profile here is the profile, this original profile that is set up with admin privileges. So I can use that. You see, um, it will go and query S3. It doesn't see any bucket. But if I create buckets in that AWS account, in this AWS account, right, I'll be able to see the AWS bucket. I'll be able to do this. So I can log in through this command line interface. I can also copy uh, this one, access keys. So I can actually use access keys. I can use this and log in with access keys, right? You know how you do AWS configure and you pass access keys. So you can use for Windows, for PowerShell and so on and so forth. So this is one way to log in. You could also log in directly through the terminal here, through the, 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 the management console. So you see, I've logged into my AWS account and this is how it comes up. So I'm currently logged in, but I'm logged in through SSO, right? I'm logged in through SSO and not <clears throat> as that root user. Remember, I was initially logged in as that root user, but this time I'm logged in as what? As AWS administrator um, through control tower, through SSO, right? Sorry, through the single sign-on interface. Um, so I can log back out from here. So I can sign out and log back in to my management account because I have more things that I want to show you. All right, so hope this is helpful uh, so far. So we'll walk through some of the things again. Let's go back to our control tower and, and finish up there. So still on that control tower, you see it's all set up. You have account in here. Everything is looking good. What I can do again is show you this access environment so under here right we we have mentioned that you can create users so you can actually create those users from your identity center you can create them from your identity center you can create different types of users from your identity center so if you want to go to identity center so you see view in IAM set identity center, you can just click here and move to your identity center, or you just search for your identity center. It was formerly called SSO, right? It was formerly called SSO. So this brings you to the documentation. Rather, let's search here identity center, identity center. Let me see if it brings it center. It is an I am service or an I am type of service. So I am identity center. That's the real name. 
So it takes us to this interface here where you can actually enable and create resources. So you see, we are no longer enabling, it's already enabled and we can actually just go ahead and create resources. So you can see that we have a user that has been created. This user was created by what? By AWS Control Tower. And this is the display name that it shows, AWS Control Tower Admin. This is the user that was created. So if you create more users here, that is how those users will be controlled by Control Tower. If I create a, a user here, I will give the user a name, let's say Primus, and I'll give that user an email address, maybe this email address, and give the user's first name and last name and blah, 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 and uh, contacts, all, all of that information. And I can choose, you see, the, the type of group to act to add this user to. Control Tower already went ahead and created some groups for me. I can add more groups. I can create groups. And that is how the groups will appear when you're logging in through that AWS uh, single sign-on um, or identity center um, page, right? That's how it will appear with that type of user or that type of uh, privileges. So I can add this user under admin privileges here under AWS control tower admins. This is the group. So I can add him. I can add him to another group, right? To power, to audit uh, AWS security audit power users. I can add them here or add them anywhere and it will appear like that. So under this one, I'll add it under AWS security audit power users. And I'll go to next. You see, it shows me the details and I can add this user. Now, if I go back, if I go back to logging through my, um, so let's go back here to that email that we received earlier. You see, if I go back to this invitation, it will take me back to that page, I think. Oh yeah. So it takes me, <laughs> this one has expired. I think, I think that email has a link, you know, it will provide us a link. This is the link. This is the link to the portal. So it is the AWS access portal. It's called access portal. So if I go here and put this and hit enter, it takes some time to load up. You see, because I, I, oh, I was already logged in, it will just bring me directly here with this account. And uh, <clears throat> I have a user. I can log in with that user, right? I have a user. If I log out of here, for instance, this one, how do I look? Okay, hold on. Let me log out of this, sign out, and sign out of here. I want to sign out of here as well, and then redo that. So, and show you how I can log in with that user. So, log back into here with a user we just created. Remember, we just created a user. So, I can do that. And the username is, the username was, I think I passed this email, if I'm not forgetting. Uh, it should have sent me an email with to accept. So I'll try that. And the password, let's try that. Okay, we haven't accepted. So we haven't accepted. So if I go into my email, I should have received an email, not this one. Yeah, this is the invitation. So it was inviting me to accept. So I need to accept to sign up. You see the new user, new password. It's asking me to give a password. So I'll give my password that I can remember and give the password again that I can remember. All right. Now I can set my password and use the Primus Learning email address that I used to be able to log in. So it's successfully created my, my user environment. And now I can use this, pass that email again to log in. And this is the password. I think it picks it up. Oh, sorry, the password is incorrect here. Uh, I hope I remember, Jeez. please remember. Oh, wrong password, Jesus. Um, please be the right password. Oh, jeez. 
So the password is not letting me. So let me log back into the main one. It's set it up correctly. So let me log back in to, I think it shouldn't log me in, I'm locked out. Yeah, so I'm locked out, okay, reload. Let me log back in as this user and log in. Uh, is that A or G? I'll just put A and try. It looks like that was G. HDD 4RH. AWS has some weird, they do it in a weird way with those. How do you even remember those things? So my verification code, I need to pass it. Uh, so I'll pass my verification code here. Oops, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Nine seven zero six seven six. Why is it failing to verify me? All right, so hold on. Bad or see, we messed messed things up a little bit here. So let's use this to log back in. Let's give a pass a username which is this email, let's use that email, let's log in, okay. Then the password, I think this one, you'll pick this password, MFA is 4178890, all right. Should log us in, and we use that root user to log in all right, to, through your control tower. So you see how I'm logging into my accounts now. I want to go to my management console using that administrator user. I can do anything inside this account as administrator user, but I can't delete that control tower environment. So if I go back to my control tower, uh, control tower you can see that the control tower is set up. All right. As expected, you have your landing zones, you have everything as we we're discussing. Now we went to control tower to so this control IAM identity center. And we set up a user and the user password was messing us up. So let's check that user. So it's already enabled. Let's check that user. That user's name. She this user is enabled. There's oh yeah, the username was wrong. We were putting a wrong username. The username was Primus and not Primus, uh, and not that email that we <laughs> that we're passing. So we're making an error uh, a mistake there. So the username is Primus. So let's log back out and log into that user. So that user was Primus. So let's go here and give a username called Primus instead of this email that we're selecting. Hold on. No, uh, you couldn't complete your request. So let's go back, refresh. Mm. Let's clear this page, clear this page. And we want to go copy this. Or just sign, do it from here. Make sure we are signed out. So we have to be signed out as we'll just, we'll just continue with whatever is logged in. So we're signed out. Now we can use this user. Let's use this user. This user, let's see. All right, and the password, I think this password. Now we are signed in guys. So this is how you'll be signed in. It will ask you for your authenticator app. So you have to do a second authenticator app for this user. I don't want to complete this process. It's the same process. And then you will sign up and see you're able to access your account. But let's, we can do this. We can complete and use, let's actually do this. I think we have some time. Go to authenticator app, set it up get used to setting this authenticator thing up guys because it may mess you someday if you don't somebody will steal your aws 
credentials and you have no way to access your account and they'll just be consuming everything. All right, so this user is set up called Primus. So you will see that Primus would have uh, access using that power um, thing that I showed you earlier. So you see the AWS power user access. This is the, the access level that Primus, the Primus user we created has. I don't have access with any other user, just this user, this group. This is the group whose permissions I'm inheriting. So they are the, the group permissions that I'm inheriting, the AWS power user group permissions that I'm inheriting. Why? Remember, we created that user and added him under the group AWS power user access. That's what we did. And that's why we're able to do this right here. So I hope this, this helps, um, you know, when you're creating users using the control tower um, environment. All right, so let's go back. Let's log back in. So let's log out of here and log back into our main thing. Sign out and sign back in with another user. So this time I want to use this user. Actually, I want to log in back into my AWS account. So my main AWS account, which is, let me just go to AWS console. That's where I want to complete this because we'll have to delete, um, you know, delete all the TMM3GB. We have to delete all the U, the, the stuff that is created in there. Now, let me pass my authenticator thing to 91465. Please log in. So, why is it failing? I don't know. Maybe this other one, Primus Learning, this is the correct one. Why is my access failing? I'll need to go in and check. So why is access failing here? This is the Primus Learning oh, I'm eight, six, eight, one, six, five, zero, four. Should should let me in. All right, interesting. So let me just sign on using the other one. I don't know why it's messing me up there. Let me sign up using this one. Let me sign in using this one. I'll have to check that 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 thing. So the username I want to use here is this email. This email right here. Use this email and go in and go in. And MFA. I think I know what is happening. I think I do. So the MFA here is nine six seven nine six seven six eight seven. Oh, it's it changed. So three two eight eight seven eight. I know why I'm not able to log into the main one because I didn't set up, uh, I didn't set up authentication for uh, authentication app for that user for that the root user. And now I've set it up and it's under the management of Control Tower, but the Control Tower user is different from the root user. Remember, the Control Tower is different from the root user, and so it's trying to figure out which which authentication to use and it's using my the authentication for the the control tower user instead of the root user so that's that's the trick that's that's what's happening all right let me log back in here so some of you might may be wondering why it's not working that that particular part was not working that's that's the reason okay so let me get in i'm back in here and now if you go to AWS config, right? Remember I told you there will be config set up as well. And AWS config will catch some of config. Let's just search for config. We'll catch some of the compliance issues, the things that you've created that are not compliant with your environment. Um, and... Uh, that's it. So let's see. I think config is supposed to be already set up, except I didn't enable it. I think I didn't enable it. 
Uh, so let's go back. Hold on. So let's confirm. I think it was not enabled, I think. Config was not enabled. All right, let's view the dashboard here. So you see config, config is all about you showing you what is compliant, right? You see compliance status. The compliance status shows the rules um, according to what control tower setup. So I'm not sure why we're not able to see your config details here. You see everything looks looks okay for now, but if we go back to control tower, let's see if we can set up that config from there. So let's see what was created here. I think there are guardrails that were created. How are they created? Uh, if there's no config, okay, preventive detective controls. So let's go to these detective controls, the ones that are enabled. Okay, don't know which ones are enabled. Why should it not take us directly? So let me see something here. And open this up a little bit. Nope. Now I want to go to log landing zone settings. This is where I want to go. All right. And modify the settings and see what happens. If I modify the settings and see if config was enabled. Let's go to next. AWS Cloud Trail level. Yeah, this is Cloud Trail. Cloud Trail is enabled. Uh, any other thing? Log configuration for this. Key encryption. So it's just encryption that is not enabled here. So. I don't know why we're not able. Let's see if you pick up that change. And go back to config as it's, as it's coming. Let's give it a moment for this change. Oh, 60 minutes? Jesus. Jeez, jeez. That's a long time. Yeah, so nothing has changed in your in the config dashboard here. Let me see the rules that we have. No rules. Yeah, so this config is supposed to be set up. Anyway, that's no problem. So let's go back to our control tower. And now to, to destroy this control tower, guys, it's it's usually you know in interesting. So to destroy it, you would have a couple of things. You see the accounts that are registered. These are the accounts that are registered. You can actually add accounts as I showed you earlier. And these ones are enrolled. An enrolled account is an account that was already existing and it's just enrolled into your control tower. Why a registered account is an account that you create, it's registered as you are creating um the as you're creating, you know, the the you know, as you're creating the stuff. So these ones are those accounts, right? Remember the accounts where you pass your email, it creates a, a real AWS AWS account, while these ones are like the organizational units um that it that that you create. So organizational units are called are registered while AWS accounts like real real accounts are called enrolled. That's why you see the difference here, registered and enrolled. All right, I just want to let this go run through and it, this one will be quicker because the things uh, it's updating are already um, done. So it will be quicker for us to just go ahead and 
for it to just go ahead and create. So you see it's 24% already. So it should, should be done in a moment. So once this is done, we'll just go ahead and show you how to delete resources because it's tricky to delete resources that are created under the AWS control tower. It's very tricky, very, very tricky to delete them. So I want to show you how to delete those, those um, to delete those. So I'll just pause this video and wait for a minute for this to complete updating. And then we can go ahead and, and come and delete all the resources. Hey guys, so yes, I finished updating my my um, landing zone again, and it should should be good. And one thing I wanted to show you uh, is what creates all the resources when you create, um, you know, when once once you use Control Tower, what creates it is is the cloud formation stack. This cloud formation stack that they provision on the back end, and I think some um, it uses la some Lambda functions as well to create those config rules. So these are the two stacks that I use. So you see AWS Control Tower Baseline uh, Config man Master and AWS Control. So it should create this config with this ID, with these resources. So let me see the resources. It should create this config. So if I go to config, uh, I'm expecting to see something here. Uh, so output, let me see the output. Oh, it doesn't create an output. I see. So some it didn't actually create create it create complete though. Then I'm not seeing an output. Let me go to config. Maybe because I logged in with that user with the administrator user. Maybe okay. So still with this one, it doesn't. There's something that is not working. Sometimes this config misbehaves. So I'll figure out in another video and let you know why this config didn't create and and um and update you in the video or in this video i can update it in the in the um description section or in a comment section so i'll do that and let you know okay so i wanted to show you those cloud formation stacks that is what um you know the the, the control tower uses under the hood to create all the resources that you, you, you see. So you see it has this base baseline stuff. It creates, you can see some of the resources that it creates in the process. It creates a cloud formation group and trail or a trail group for cloud trail. You can see the trail and see all what is happening in it. So you can use it to monitor uh, logs that are coming through. So the trail groups should be coming up in a bit. And this is the trail group right here called AWS Control Tower Cloud Trail. And yeah, this is these are the, the events that are coming or log streams that are coming in. You can look at them at details. I'm sure you, you are aware of Cloud Trail. Also, there should be Lambda functions that are created in through this process to create all the uh, the configuration, the preventive guardrails, the, the and stuff. Oh, and it looks like it doesn't create any. This is interesting. Yeah, so it doesn't actually create any any lambda functions. It uses just that cloud formation, or the lambda functions are under the hood. I think it it creates the lambda function from the AWS side of things, and so they are not visible to us. That's what happens. Um, so you can take a look at documentation to see wh where the Lambda functions, um, uh, you know, as look at uh, any details about the Lambda functions. You can take a look at that in your documentation. All right. And so let's go back to Control Tower and see if we can clean up the environment. So if you go to Control Tower, to clean up the, the environment, you would need to, first of all, delete all the accounts, right? or remove them from the organization. And so to do that, it's tricky. Let's say if you go here, right, you know there are two accounts here. Let's say you want to remove this account. You click on it and go to actions. You see, it doesn't show you how to remove. Or even if you go to this one, like enlarge it and say, hey, delete. It won't even delete, right? Yeah, this one, for controls owned by AWS Security Hub, the compliance, da, 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 unknown. 
Yeah, because it didn't it was not able to to create that that config and so it's not able to see what's happening. So all right, let's go here. You see, it doesn't give you the opportunity to delete. Now to be able to do that, I think we can go to dashboard, scroll down and go to settings. Hmm. Hold on. That means on settings, okay. Oh, settings, let me see. Okay, are, these are not the general settings. Account, user control, okay. This is, this is where I want to go, I think. And these are the network settings. Actually, you could you could define the maximum number of private subnets that you have, either two or three or whatever. Uh, here, this is where you define it. Okay, let's go back. And AWS Control Tower setup is complete. So, go back to dashboard. I'm trying to figure out the settings to delete this. Oh, I think, wait, no, not this one. Okay. Come on. All right, in here, I'm expecting to see a settings page. Or maybe this account. Yeah, it should be here. Management. I'm expecting it to be here, the settings, but it's not. All right. Interesting. Yeah, it's grayed out. Okay, let's see. So delete. Okay. Mm. Let's see if it deletes. It will, I'm not sure it will delete. Okay, it says you can't delete this because a minimum of one custom OU is under. That is what I was expecting it to do. So if we go under, this, these are the custom ones. Did we create a account? No, we didn't. All right, let's go in here and try to delete one by one and see what happens. Oops, looks like somewhere else. So go back to account manage management and instant. Let's see if we can delete one of those. And it doesn't let us to do that. Hmm. Configuration decommission. This is what I'm expecting. Decommission landing zone. So if you go to decommission and acknowledge acknowledge and acknowledge and type decommission here i think it will let it will tell us that we are not able to decommission a decom decommission from know how to type decommission this yep so it's decommissioning the the landing zone process so it will take some time to decommission um and it will clean up your landing zone for you, clean up the environment. Uh, and yeah, this is how you decommission your AWS environment because it's set up with control tower. All right, I hope this was helpful, but it would decommission and not delete the accounts. Once it decommissions, you can go to control tower, um, to AWS organizations and then delete the AWS account. That's how it works. So if you decommission it, then you go back to organizations, to AWS organizations, this is the organizations, 
once it's been decommissioned from the management by control tower, you then come in here, which is the organization. You see, this is where you can you can um, actually delete these accounts. So you have two accounts in here. You can go inside and delete these accounts. So you can remove it. Let me see if it allows us to remove. Okay, it doesn't allow us to remove because there's a root one close. So you can ask it to close that account, right? And you, you request that you copy all the the IPs and put here, the, the account IDs and put here. You see, it will close that account. And then you go to the next account. The next account was, let's go back here. The next account was the, so we close this one, is this lock one. So you click on it. Go up there. No, this is the one we just did. Go back, go to audit, I think audit, and close. You see you're closing the AWS account permanently. And just copy the ID, the account ID, and put here, and then close the account. After some days, it will not just close after a day or so. It will actually close after some days take a, I think about a day or so, if I'm not mistaken. And then once it's closed, you can then delete um, the organizational unit. So let's see if we can delete. If you let us delete, but the, the, the account are not closed completely. They will take, take some time. Yep, it can't delete. So it will take some time for, for you to really completely close those AWS accounts. All right, I just wanted to show you how to decommission this. So you go to the control tower environment, go to that decommission page, decommission it first, then you can come in here and close your AWS account so that no resources are wasted, right? Um, now I have just this, my management account, and it should be working as expected. Thanks guys for, for walking through this video. I know we're all, um, you know, going through it together and that's that's what you do at your job right you don't want to do it as straight as though it's it's just yeah i think i think you love the video <laughs> hit us um with, with the subscribe button guys let us know what you think and um in the comment section we'll be uh, doing another video the next video we'll do will be on cross account access um within aws environment so we'll create two aws accounts and create a cross account um type of access within the two accounts and query things inside the two accounts just to show you that you can do that at your work because it's usually something that's done a lot in organizations. Thanks guys and bye-bye.